Hey everyone, the global elites seem to be losing their stranglehold on power and their ability to manipulate or influence the people of the world, in particular the western world. And while I'm not a big predictor of the future, I expect more of this to come. Yeah, sure, Canada, yeah, we're going to be the laggards, we're going to be way late to the game as per usual, but even here, change is coming. The writing's on the wall, because large masses of average or regular everyday people in western countries, in western societies, are fed up with having their lives micromanaged, dictated, and controlled by central planning authoritarian elitists. Headline out of the CBC News World. Longest UN climate talks end with no deal on carbon markets. After two weeks, countries were left struggling to adopt declaration for bold action. It's being reported by the Associated Press, December 15, 2019. Marathon International climate talks ended Sunday with negotiators postponing until next year a key decision on how to regulate global carbon markets. After two weeks of negotiations in Madrid on tackling global warming, delegates from almost 200 nations passed declarations calling for greater ambition in cutting planet heating greenhouse gases and in helping poor countries that are suffering the effects of climate change. Well, hold on, before I continue any further, this is the divide, but see, we're talking about a CBC News article here. So, so these are people that will align and Canadian press, come on, these are these elitists that we're talking about. So they're actually going to be more aligned with the central planet's leaders because, well, basically they all sit around and converse with each other and seemingly all share the same ideology or preference for micromanaging, dictating, and controlling every aspect of our social and economic lives. And yeah, there's quite a few of them. There was like, what, 27,000? That's the thing. They're all talking about, oh, we got to cut down on greenhouse gas emissions or reduce, greatly reduce our carbon footprints because, oh, oh, you know, Greta, oh, the world is burning. Ah, oh, emergency. And in Canada, we have a climate emergency, but yet 27,000 of them took planes, trains, automobiles, automobiles, anything they could get their hands on that yeah, use a lot of carbon, right? You know, all those carbon intensive methods of travel or transportation yeah they used all that up to go to this conference which which like think about it so if you're all if we're all supposed to be like literally i mean for the average person like myself you know i be careful that i don't use too much oil to heat the house or wood or electricity i mean whatever your source right do whatever you can to reduce your carbon footprint no matter how negatively it affects your life or your livelihood or your personal situation but hey now we can't do that. Listen, it's too important. We got to. We we have to do this. We can't. Oh wait a minute. I guess we could do a conference because we do have such thing as streaming and video conferencing. But no, 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 no. It's much more important that we all get together because it's really hard to have glasses of wine and a big old hoedown when we're all separated by geographical divides. That's the thing. They, these people are, don't give a shit about their carbon footprint. I mean, 27,000 people. 27,000 people. I can't say that enough. 27,000 people showed up at this place. And yet, they act as if their major concern is reducing the carbon footprint or greenhouse gases. <laughs> they didn't walk there, folks. Come on. Like I say, these people are the biggest hypocrites on the planet. And not only the hypocrites, but the results of this two week long, basically what, a vacation for the elitists, all probably mostly paid for by taxpayers who could never afford to travel in such luxury or to travel to such destinations, right? I mean, I know myself, I sure as hell can't afford to do any of these, like, travel to Madrid or any of these places. I can't, I can't afford it. I just can't afford it. And because I'm a private citizen and I can't plunder the economic resources of the prosperity of, of millions of people to force them to subsidize or pay for my travel, well, I, I may never get there. I'm cool with that, though. Not a gripe, just pointing at a reality. But, I mean, these people, like I say, these they, they all went there. And for two weeks, two fucking weeks, actually, they went, what, was it a couple of days beyond the two weeks? So they even had an extended vacation by a couple of days. But after it all... What did they manage to accomplish other than creating that big giant carbon footprint or those carbon emissions that they are so against, right? <laughs> nothing. They accomplished absolutely nothing other than pointing out the reality that, yeah, there is genuine divide. Even the leftists, these environmentalists, these collectivists, these authoritarians, these elitists, you, you watch and see how this plays out. You're going to see how they're going to diverge and divide and start singing their own perspective tunes eventually. Like I say, that's the thing with intersectionality or identity politics or collectivism. Once it's played out in its entirety, the 
ugly reality of how nefarious, how detrimental, how devastating collectivism is to each and every one of us as individuals. Well, that'll play out so well, I expect or I hope over the next little while, that collectivism will once again be proven to be the Achilles heel and what always destroys all these collective initiatives. The 20th century alone showed how devastating, destructive, and counterproductive collectivism truly is. You're never, ever, ever going to get the point where you're going to be able to collectivize millions or billions of people into a one-size-fits-all approach. That's never happened in history, and it sure as heck ain't going to happen anytime soon. So anyways, folks, I'll place a link to not just that headline article out of CBC News, but I cut, got a couple other lined up. Another CBC uh, News article with the headline, Anger Erupts at UN Climate Summit as Major Economies Resist Bold Action. Then I got another one. This one's out of the Globe and Mail. Headline, Madrid Climate Talks End in Near Failure as Crucial Decisions Are Bumped into 2020. Like I say, kick that old proverbial can down the road, right? Jeez, that can. What's left of that can anyways? It it's must be in really rough shape. You might want to get a new can at some point in time. Although that can, that's the thing. That's reality. So actually, there is no new can. There is, there is no new reality. There's just reality. Trying to deny or kick that can down the road or deny that reality doesn't change reality at all. It might postpone it in the minds of some people, but reality unfolds. People are always going to do what's in their own best interest. Yeah, shocking revelations. All individual place a priority on their own personal interest. Why a person should have to explain that today, I don't know. That, 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 that should be something that everyone understands instinctively and intrinsically. But the central plan and elites, like I say, they, they figure that they, hey, if you just me mess around with the mechanisms of power and control and manipulation, using media, they, they figure that they can just manipulate things to always work out to their advantage. <laughs> well, they're getting a real, real strong message, a real strong signal to suggest or say, no, that is definitely not a reflection of reality. Never has been, nor never will be. It's Canadian Libertarian. And I love liberty.